Well, hello viewers. Good to see you again. Good to chat with you again. It's been a long time. I haven't done a live stream. Uh, the last successful one was I think in October of 2022. It is now the summer of 2023. So yeah, it's time to talk to my viewers. Now, first of all, I have a confession because in reality, I am not live right now. I'm not dead. However, this is not the live video. What happened is 24 hours ago in this same spot, I made an attempt to do a live stream and the first one failed. No, oh no, it's messing with me. No, it's the wrong camera. The camera wasn't connected right. The second one was not much better. Oh, hopefully somebody can see me. I'm looking. Okay. I hear technical difficulties. Um, I was having a lot of problems with the mouse, with scrolling, and most of that video was me trying to make the computer work and failing. But what made it even worse is when I finished the video, and I went to view it. I found out the picture quality was absolutely terrible. I just couldn't handle it. There is no way I was going to release it. However, there is only one thing in my favor uh, yesterday, and that was I had actually filmed it with a second camera. And you know what? I've got another camera here. So here's what I'm going to do. I am not going to scrap my live video. I'm going to include it in this one. But in Back to the Future style, right now, actually, I can see all my viewers' questions. The problem was I couldn't see them when I was live. I only caught a few. Now I have all of them in front of me. I can actually answer more questions and just put it in with this video. But first, let me go back to the what happened yesterday. And this is how I started off. It's Mac ACP 1911 Hey Slim uh, Marco from Aurora want to get into camping. What is the best suggestion? Got a 2021 Subaru Ascent as a tow vehicle. So the question is, what do you need to camp with? Sky's the limit. I went from whatever I could carry in a backpack to um a very small trailer, the A-liner. A uh, that was my very first trailer. And uh, then I went to the Outback fiberglass. Uh, they're all relatively light to tow. Um, if you want a, a vehicle to tow, uh, you know, something to, uh, to haul, I should say, um, under 2,000 pounds would be preferable if you've only got a small vehicle. If you've only got uh, like six cylinder, you know, you might be able to go up a little bit, but if you're only four cylinder, don't go too far because you might get yourself into trouble. Sorry, that's all I can tell you right now. Anything works, shop around. Um, you know, if some people like vans, some people camp in their, in, their, in their vehicle or they have a tent on the back, they're all good answers, really. So, you know, find out what's out there and uh, sort of, you know, decide for yourself. Don't, don't throw lots of money at the problem, first of all. See if you can, you know, borrow friends or take one for a trial, go a short distance, and then go from there. Kathy Butler asked, do you miss your A-liner? The answer is no, I do not miss my A-liner. It's like I don't miss a pair of worn out shoes. There is nothing to miss. It broke down. It was breaking down. It was no longer safe to travel with. It was going to cost me a ton of money. Do I miss it? Absolutely not. Do I admire that type of trailer? Yes. And if, you know, a better one had come around, or, you know, come along, I might have considered it, but it didn't. And... The new ones are extremely expensive. So that is why I switched to a fiberglass trailer. Do I regret that? 
Um, well, if you saw my last travel series and the fact that the frame broke, that's kind of another discussion, but I'm not going to go any further with that right now. So, okay, so Original 6 um, says, Hi, Slim. What are your plans for next winter? Kind of the same as every winter. I have no idea because I really do not make a schedule or an itinerary or any of that. And so I don't know where I'll be next winter. I don't know where I'll be two months from now. I know where I am right now. <laughs> I'm at the cabin. That's easy. Um, I do try to plan a little, but I can't plan for six months in the future because so many things change. So don't know. I'm considering my options. If you have suggestions, please uh, pass a note away. Okay. Uh, okay, so some of these, how long, okay, Sandra Smith, how long have you been in New Brunswick? Two years. Okay, that's an easy one. How's your life in New Brunswick? I love New Brunswick. I really do. Look at this view. And it's quiet, um, except for the crickets and, uh, you know, sometimes the hummingbirds are fighting. But most of the time, it's pretty quiet. And the reason I moved out here is I was tired of big city living. Um, I wanted to relax. I wanted to be in nature. I mean, this is not way in the woods. I think I've said this many, many times. I'm in uh, rural New Brunswick. I'm not 100 miles away from civilization. Um, and so it's a compromise. Uh, I, there are other, you know, cottages and, and, and homes and summer houses and all that all around here. I mean, there is a road to go in. It's not like I, you know, I've trekked in and it's a, uh, you know, a cabin in the middle of the woods. Love to have that at some point, but that's not what I have right now. And I mean, I'm, I'm putting too much into the question. So let me just sort of carry on here. Okay. From John Blackie on your cabin, future edition, would this mean you wait, will move in? Okay. And there's another question by Pete Lewark, is New Brunswick now your permanent forever home? So let's talk about two things, New Brunswick and the cabin. The cabin is not my home. This is a place where I can relax, uh, get away. Um, I have, you know, I've got other arrangements that I stay most of the time. I have been staying at the cabin, I'd say, of the last two weeks I've slept in the cabin about a week. The problem right now is it's uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 26 degrees Celsius. I don't have proper ventilation. I don't have air conditioning. And that's part of the reason I'm out here on the deck, because it is way too hot for me to do a video in there. Um, I am in New Brunswick. I live nowhere else. So like I moved here. So what else can I say? Is it my forever home? I don't, nothing is forever in my life, <laughs> to be honest with you. I get different ideas, then maybe it's not. But right now, I am very, very happy living in New Brunswick. Okay, and the question about the addition, would that mean I would move in? I am not making any plans to move into this cabin any time in the near future, because there are so many more things I have to do to be able to live in here. I do not have a gray water tank. I do not have a septic tank. I do not have a well. To tell people I was living here under, you know, those conditions, especially when it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, would be a lie. And I'm not going to lie to you. This is just a little retreat and um, a seasonal property. Okay. A hello from uh, The Flying Man has asked, do you plan to take a road trip to South America someday? And if you do, would you have the courage to fly in a paramotor with me? Um, I would say the odds are pretty slim. Uh, you know, and I couldn't make a commitment like that. Sorry. Oh, I got scroll back. Uh, would I ever go to South America? I would love to go to South America. 
Um, I would love to go anywhere in the world. There is not one country on this planet that if the opportunity and the time was right, that I would not consider it going. There is no nowhere on this planet that's on my no-go list. And I want to be clear on that. I mean, the circumstances would have to be right, yes. But I'd love to travel anywhere. And in the past, I have done world traveling. I haven't been anywhere, I everywhere. I have never, ever been to Europe. And I've never been to Africa. I've never been to Australia or New Zealand. There's a lot of places that I've never been, but I'd love to go. Okay, here's uh, the Waffle Ninja. Great name. Howdy, do you ever consider a high top van instead of a trailer? Okay, would I consider a high top van? Why not? Um, it's just, I would never consider a $200,000 high top van. I have always, always lived within a budget. And when I got my Jeep, and a lot of people like want to diss my Jeep liberty, liberty a lot, but they got to understand it is what I could afford. Um, I paid, I think it was 8,000 Canadian, which is probably about 6,500 US dollars for a used Jeep Liberty. And it's got me like what, for the last three years, it's got me through that. For, you know, yes, I had to do a little work on it every once in a while. But if I was to get a van, I can absolutely guarantee you it would be a used van that did not cost me an awful lot of money because I just would feel like I've never bought a new vehicle. I've never bought a new, like anything, you know, like I've never bought a new cabin or a new house or a new trailer. Everything I buy is used. Why? Because I'd like to recycle. I feel better. I don't want to buy brand new, but it would be nice if I get something a little newer. Okay, that's my ramble. That's my rant. Lynn Hammond says, my favorite Slim videos are the ones about the blues. Would love to have more like that where you mix history with travel. Lynn, I'm glad you liked that video, which has been taken down, by the way. I never got around the issues with copyright, which is unfortunate because it was a video I put a lot of work in, and I hope some way I can release it again. But that's the problem. When I would love to do music videos, and I have no problem with sharing, you know, sharing the, uh, the, the royalties with it because I do do a lot of work to put that video but the issue with that particular video was that, yes, I understand there were, and before I started it, that the, uh, there are other people that should get royalties for it. It's their music. Totally understand it. Why I took it down is because they took control of the video and put commercials every five minutes. And that totally destroyed the whole video. I couldn't watch it, not with a commercial every five minutes. I had to take it down. I'm hoping YouTube or somebody will let me put it through and there's compromise between the music uh, uh, owner because it, it's very seldom the people that actually wrote this, the song, it's the corporations and me, who I consider myself part of the creative team in that regard. So anyway, another rant, sorry about that. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, Nick Raj asks, uh, would you be adding solar panels to your cabin roof? Uh, Raj, that was the original intent. The problem is all these trees. Let me just show you here. Hopefully I can do this. Yeah, look at all those trees in the way of the sun. And that is why I can't put solar panels on the roof. I'd have to get rid of the trees. And if I have to get rid of the trees then I'm no longer in the woods. And if I'm no longer in the woods, then, you know, what am I on a vacant lot? That doesn't sound fun. And so um, I will, what I actually plan on doing is having it towards the waterfront. 
I've got some ideas that I can actually get it there and nobody's going to complain because that's the other thing about this cabin is although I know there's, there's others out there, other vloggers, they have a cabin in the woods and nobody cares what they do. They can do anything. The sky's the limit. Unfortunately, I have to obey the local authorities, the, the planners, um, and there are things I can't do on a waterfront property, so I'm kind of stuck in that regard. Emmy Lou Luna asks, what is your favorite place you have visited? There's no such thing, or they're all my favorite places. Anytime I've had a phenomenal place that I just loved for that minute, for that moment, and I've gone back to it, it's never been the same. And I think most people understand that. It's not just beautiful scenery. It's not just beautiful weather. Uh, it's not just wonderful people there, you know, that you're, you're, you're sort of uh, around. Everything changes because it's not just a property or a landscape. You have to be in the right mood. And I seriously, I could have a great time at a garbage dump. Actually, I probably find some some car parts for my for my Liberty or something or something I can use for the cabin. So I have a great time in the garbage dump. But no, I I mean, like I know what you're saying. Like if you're if you're planning a, a trip, what do I recommend? Um, everywhere I've got has been an experience for me, and I really do not have any favorites. I certainly when I lived. In Western Canada, I loved Western Canada, and I loved the Western U.S. because it was very close by. I'm in the East, so now, of course, I'm favoring the East. But if I travel farther south, farther north, if I, you know, get off this continent, I really, you know, I can't answer that. But you understand, it's not the place. It's the event at the time, the way you're feeling. That You know, if you get into the, you know, to the, to the scene... Get into the scene, man. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Okay, so from, from sea to shining sea, tow and a frame with V6 Grand Caravan. Mac, towing max is 3,600 3, pounds. Trailer is 2,100, but people tell me not to do it. Thoughts? Um, you've got six cylinders. That's a good thing. Um, trailer is 2100, but I'm thinking that it's the dead empty weight, correct? Um, not what it is when it's full. The outback is, I think, is it 1400 pounds um, empty? But when I load all my stuff up for traveling, I'm usually around 2000, sometimes over 2000 pounds. So it's the loaded weight. Is what you have to consider and you got to consider if you're going up and down mountains as well so it's a tough question but i think you get the gist of it anyway okay uh thanks jesus slim why didn't you stop in camp illinois during your last trip um i did i did camp in illinois um it just i didn't think much of the campsite. It was outside of Chicago. Um, somebody had recommended it and uh, it was like, eh, it was okay. Sorry. It was, it was not a place I'd go to be one with nature. It was a place to bring your family and to go for a day and to play lots of music and all that. And so rather than diss the place, I just figured, you know what, I'm not going to even bring my camera out. I was there for a, a few days to do editing, and then I left. Now, is there better places in Illinois? I'm absolutely 100% sure there are. But when I'm going through and I don't make any prior plans, it's hit and miss. And if it's miss, do I just whine about it? Do I do a videoing, video just whining I, I don't want to do that. There are times when things are not what I expected them to be, you know, and when I went to, um, was it Wisconsin? No. Where was I? Michigan? I think it was Michigan. <laughs> I don't know. No, it wasn't Michigan. It's the third one. Anyway, uh, 
it wasn't, I, I thought I spent too much more, too much money. And so, but I did do a video because I did find some things. I didn't find any good things. I have to at least have a balance. So sorry, no Illinois video. And the same with Ohio. I was in Ohio, um, but I, I just couldn't luck out. I couldn't find a really good place to camp without any notice and without doing my research. My fault. John, how difficult, logistically speaking, was it moving across the country? It was extremely difficult. It wasn't moving across the country that was extremely difficult. It was preparing for it. It was, you know, cutting all your ties. It was realizing you got too much stuff and you got to give it away or get a big dumpster and do a garage sale. And uh, it was a lot of work. It really was. If you don't have any stuff to start with, it's perfect. <laughs> don't have so much stuff. Okay. Uh, let's talk to um, 50, 1950s American father. Yeah, I agree, Slim. You are a man's man, jack of all trades, a Ron Swanson modern man, or perhaps the John Wayne stoic old ways. Okay. Thank you, 50s American father. Hopefully, I have some appeal to um, somebody that's not from the 50s, too. Uh, one thing I, I, I do find, like, my videos appeal to a certain age group. And um, that's fine. I know when I started off, there was one period, like, five years ago, that it was almost straight across the board. You know, there's people from 18 to 180 watching my videos. For whatever reason, now it's mostly 60 plus. I'm all still okay with it. As long as somebody's watching my videos, I'm okay with that. However, I would like to find ways of just broadening, broadening my audience a little. So that's something I've got to consider. Super Jen. Hi from Tennessee. Does your job allow weeks of vacation to do these trips or do you work re remote while you travel? Well, surprise, Super Jan. This is my job. I'm retired. I think everybody understands that. I retired many years ago. And uh, I was living off a very, 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 I don't have a microscope, a very tiny, tiny, tiny pension, which would buy me like a coffee. And I decided, you know, well, a, that's not much more, much money. And B, I wanted to share my ideas at the same time. That's when YouTube came in. Now, in that regard, does YouTube make me millions and millions and millions? No, it doesn't. I still want to be me. I'm not going to, you know, sell my soul for a few bucks. And by the way, I do make money. The way I make money is royalties. It's the advertising. And so, you know, when people tell me that, well, they've shut off the advertising, well, that's good for you, but that's bad for me because that little bit I make off advertising is what is financing my trips. You know what? I'm starting to lose my voice. And over here, and I just spilt water because I've got ice in here. I'm on a, I'm on a deck, right? And part of my culture is if you're on a deck, you need a beer. And so what I've got tonight is Upside Dawn. It's by the Athletic Brewing Company, and it says it's golden. A lot of people do not appreciate me drinking beer on camera. And I'm sorry for that, because I understand some people cannot drink alcohol. Oh, but this is so good. And it's non-alcoholic. This is, like, I think it says 0%. I think it's like 0.05 or something like that. This is a non-alcoholic beer. 
I love beer. I love beer on a patio. And this is the perfect time. Hey, I need this. Doesn't have alcohol, but it has flavor. So thumbs up. The uh, upside dawn. Can you see that? Yeah. I don't know if that's focusing or not. Good stuff. And I bought this. Nobody, <laughs> nobody gives me free beer unless I see them in person, and then they do. Okay, back to the questions here. Trina Hurley, I always enjoy you. I'm always in a much better mood after I've watched one of your posts. I feel like we live within a few hours of each other. Well, thank you. Is it Trina? Did I say that right? I'm. I'm. If you want to know how to pr mispronounce anything, ask me, and I'm guaranteed I'm going to mispronounce it. I like to think that I'm really talking to you guys. That I'm not talking to a camera. And when I'm shooting, I'm not. I'm hardly ever. I shouldn't say that, but 90% of the time, I am not looking at a monitor. If I'm using the GoPro, I'm kind of forced to look at the monitor sometimes, but like, I'm not looking at you, the, you know, the computer's here. I'm looking at the camera. I'm not looking at the computer because that makes me feel I'm actually talking to you. And that's, it makes me comfortable that I'm not just blabbing away, but I am blabbing away. Uh, D Loomis, 2011-49. When will the season change to winter where you are? Uh, New Brunswick typically has a pretty long summer and fall uh, compared to some other places in Canada, like Alberta, for example. Um, I typically see snow in December and not a lot. However, that could change. You know, it certainly could happen in October. But when I've been renovating, in a, you know, the last two years that I've been re renovating, I can still, the ground has not been frozen even in December. So I can still do things inside and outside. Um, but it gets dark. And it's the darkness that I'm not crazy about. I'm limited to the days. I'm watching this carpenter ant trying to get into the cabin there. Oh, you hear the squirrel? Sorry. Anyway. Um, I am so, okay. Beth Price asks, I am so glad you faced your fear of water. The kayak shots, shots enhance the travel videos. Well, thank you. Because I know some people are not into kayaks, but you got to understand that I had a phobia of water. Um, and I still have, I'm still not a hundred percent comfortable um, I have to take more swimming lessons. I have to take more lessons on the shore, you know, turning over the kayak in the water. So when that actually happens, I know what to do. But I have the confidence that I will not just freeze up in fear anymore, that I know the life jacket, which will always be on me, will work. And I'm not going to go 20 miles out to sea with my kayak, I'm going to be always very close to the shore. And uh, I'm really hoping, I've never been out the front here because I can't get the kayak through all the bushes. But I'm hoping this summer, it's one of the things I can do is show you a video from the cabin getting into the water here. Well, now I can go through some of the questions that weren't answered because I didn't see them the first time. And I've, I've uh, just made some cheat sheets here. They're, they're all there. These are your questions. Nothing's made up. Um, Cindy Roth asks, what's your go-to way of finding free and low-cost campsites? Okay, so a little bit of research and a little bit of asking the locals as I travel. I do some minimal research before I go. I know regions, um, that just is based on, you know, camping for like eight years and traveling around North America. Uh, but uh, there are places I know I will not find any free campsites and I don't even bother. It's not worth it. I mean, camping in a gravel pit or a Walmart is not an option for me unless it's an emergency because it's just not going to be fun. That's not, I'm, I'm not going to be one with nature in a parking lot. So um, I do 
you know, look, I, you know, the best way, and I've said this in the past, is just simply in your, in the area, you know, grab lunch and chat with the locals, get some tips, meet some people. When you're camping and you're going to another place, ask people at the campsite where, you know, you know, do you have any places in Illinois? And I, I've asked, like when I took this last uh, trip, uh, a lot of the places I did go were from my viewers, not just, you know, something I found online. And I used those tips. Some of them were really good. Some of them weren't, but that's not the fault of the viewer. Probably it was a great experience for them at the time. And when I went there, like the bugs were too bad or the costs shot up, you know, so I don't, I have a basic way of doing it is a little bit of research, a lot of luck and ask a lot of questions from forest rangers, from the other campers, from the people in the neighborhood. When you're sitting down in a little cafe in a little town having a coffee, you might even ask the waitress. She might have a favorite place as well. Lisa Murphy asks, what future plans do you have for the cabin? And I did discuss things about the cabin. There's a lot of questions about the cabin. And uh, what are my future plans for it? I don't know. I'm going to let it evolve because I do not live here full time. This is just a seasonal cabin and I'm, I'm not living here. So I'm only going to be visiting it every once in a while, probably not much during the winter time. But as far as the renovations go, I just did a video about two weeks ago explaining what I plan to do this summer. What's in the future? I'm not, I don't know. I love building this, uh, this cabin. It was a great learning experience. I learned some new uh, skills and I found out my own capabilities and I'm really happy with it, but it's not near close to being done yet. So please stay with me as I put out more videos in the future on my little do-it-yourself renovations. Uh, uh, Share Bear asks, I'm in Buffalo. Are you anywhere near the wildfires? Um, there were wildfires in New Brunswick. There are some really terrible floods in Nova Scotia, especially in the Halifax area. Neither of those affected me. However, you know, the way the weather is in the world these days, I'm pretty sh certain there's going to be something, floods. I'm not really concerned about floods because I'm like, at least with the cabin, I'm high on a hill. Uh, winds are always a problem. And so, yeah as will there be any disasters in the near future as far as weather probably <laughs> hopefully i'll have a camera ready buster mcmahon asks just wondering what plans are for the cabin's new addition i did mention that i want to do an addition like on that section right there the reason being is the way that the uh the stove is placed and i'm not putting up a new uh you know chimney flue that uh, there's nowhere to put like a little couch or a sofa and just sort of sit around and, and relax. So what I plan on doing is just having a little sitting room. That's, that's really all it is. Just a really small eight by 10 foot sitting room. Gives me more space indoors. And uh, I don't have to worry about knocking around things, getting around that corner where the stove is. Jim Robison asks, how did you get your name Slim Potato Head? And I think there's like four or five in this video, which I typically ignore. <laughs> but I actually did film a segment where I had uh, the answer to that question. It was on one of my uh, videos uh, fixing up the cabin, but it made it on the cutting room floor. So guess what? I'm going to find it and I'm going to put that answer right here. Where will I go next? I don't know. I mean, that's the nice thing about being Slim Potato Head is that it's not really associated with anything in the real world, at least. You know, I'm not like Billy Bob's RV hair life or something like that. <laughs> uh, I, I do kind of try to be a little bit more diverse, so I don't know where I'm going to go back next. And uh, which sort of brings me up with another thing, and that is... And a lot of people do ask, where did you get the name Slim Potato Head? And, uh, you know, I always try to avoid those questions. And the simple reason is this, and a lot of people will probably think I'm full of it, but it's the real, it's the real truth. I have no idea 
where Slim Potato Head came from. I think about 10 years ago, and I still don't know why, I decided to get a YouTube account. And it asked for your name. And it's like, I had no trust of the internet back then. And guess what? I have less trust with the internet right now. So it's like, no, I'm not giving you my real name. And uh, I tried some clever names and none of them worked. Somebody had already taken them. So then I said, okay, fine. Two words, done. And the reason I don't remember any of it is because it was such an insignificant event in my life at the time. It was like, okay, well, I needed an account. Don't know why. And it wasn't until three years later that, okay, maybe I could put out a video. Who knows what's going to happen? What's a good name? Well, I'm already Slim Potato Head. Why not keep it? It seems to have stuck. Rick Lewis, will you be doing any camping soon? No, I will not be doing any trailer camping soon. Let's put it this way. I do not camp in peak season. The reason I don't camp in peak season, A, it's too busy. Uh, there's hardly any good campsites available. It's noisy. Um, all the things that I like about camping, which is being one with nature, being quiet, peaceful do not happen in peak season i have to be honest i do not want to fight crowds i don't want to fight dog poop and everything else that goes in peak season so no i will not be camping until probably end of august early september and uh will i be camping on a trailer or will he be camping with it with a tent i'm not sure you'll have to tune in do you ever do any cycling? Oh, sorry, this is Do Drop In asks, do you ever do any cycling, ride bicycles? Um, when I had the A-frame, I actually had a bicycle attached to it, but I found traveling with a bicycle with my trailer, with my camper, it was just a total mess by the time I got there because I'd be driving through snow and dirt and gravel and it was always a mess. I might try having a bike on the back again. Uh, I would only put a really cheap bike, like if I found a bike for free, I might strap it on the back. I'm not gonna pay, you know, $1,000 for a bike because A, I'll destroy it or somebody else will probably steal it. So um, will I do a trip with a bicycle? No, if I was 30, I would, but uh, I think at this point, it's just not worth the risk. I can, walk, I can drive around the neighborhood with a bicycle, but I'm not going to go across the country. Uh, let's see. Scott Clark, would you ever go to the Arctic Circle? Scott, where have you been? Check out my videos on the Arctic Circle. I did them three years ago, and when I get back into, uh, into the comments, I'll send you a link. Okay, Impressions from the Garden asks, The wild turkey's still there. I have seen the wild turkeys um, two or three days ago, not right on the cabin, on the way in, uh, only about three or four. The reason I'm not seeing wild turkeys right now is because they have very, very young babies. They are breeding their little, their little guys and their little girls, and they typically are not wandering around. I would expect in the next few weeks, I'm gonna get a little visit because I know they like to see me, but now they're they're hiding somewhere. But pretty soon, yeah, I expect the turkeys will be out. Prog Kansas asks, can you set up a windmill generator? If you have to trim up trees, would you be allowed? Two questions, okay. Can I set up a wind generator? No point, no point whatsoever. There is some wind now, but there is never more than like a short period where there's enough to actually generate power from wind. You need a lot of wind power. And not only that, you can't have any obstructions. I There's one guy that I, I met uh, in uh, the interior of New Brunswick that has a wind generator. He has it 120 feet in the air. I am not putting anything 120 feet in the air here, and I'm not gonna cut down the trees. So is a wind generator in my future here? No. 
it is just not worth the bother. It's just not worth the amount I'd get out of uh, out of it. Solar, yes. Wind generation here, no. Bill Davis asks, I remember you saying one time that a pickup truck will not work for you. Why is that? Bill, I have no recollection of that conversation. I could camp in a pickup truck. And I believe when I did my, um, my uh, Arctic Circle and my Yukon videos, I recommended that the best way of going on the Dempster Highway was with a pickup truck and a pickup camper. Um, I would always consider that if the price was right. I am still a budget traveler. I am not going to spend two or three hundred thousand dollars on a brand new truck and a brand new camper. If I get a used truck at a reasonable price, I may consider it. If I get a used camper or build my own camper, I'd consider it. Is it in the near future? With the prices of trucks, what they're getting up here right now, I think the price has got to get a little lower before I invest in one. But I'm looking, so thanks. I would consider a truck if that's the question. So uh, whatever I said before, no longer is the same. Now here's a good one I missed the first time. Vengus Can, how do you maintain your specific diet food selection while on the road? Do you find it difficult to find ingredients and foods while on the road? Uh, a little, but not much, because I am not a health food freak. Does that sound kind of weird? I consider myself a vegetarian, but I also consider myself a road food vegetarian. So if I can get things at a Walmart, at a small convenience store, at a gas station, that's what I eat. Um, is it convenient? Well, I do have some challenges sometimes, but I'm also not a foodie. I don't, I don't live to eat. I eat to live. And so I'm okay with bland food, spaghetti, macaroni, veggie, veggie dogs. I eat a lot of the same thing, potatoes, of course. So no, it's not really a problem. But if there's something that I really want to jazz up for a particular night, especially for a video, I have to be a little bit more considerate of others. And so, yeah, I do have to search for things sometimes, but I'm okay with just having the same boring food day and night, on the road or in the cabin, it doesn't matter. Paul Williamson asks, are you upgrading your vehicle? Um, when I have to, I it's running fine. Um, you know, it gets good, reasonably good gas mileage. It's not burning oil. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've just put in, uh, you know, new bearings. And uh, so yeah, no, I'm not changing it anytime soon. If I find a phenomenal deal on something that's better, I'd consider it. But hey, I, I'm i used to running things to the ground and I get something when I have to. Before I do a major travel, I make sure my vehicle is running properly. If there's any danger that it's going to fail and I can prevent it, I would change vehicles before I do my road trips. But for now, it's doing okay. Okay, one last question, and there's lots of questions, and, and some of them I've already answered. Uh, but uh, Lee the Bee asks, Hey Slim, any plans to head south to the deserts in winter? Um, possibly. I don't know what desert that may be. However, I wouldn't, you know, I don't make plans for the winter until it's winter. So, I'd like to be somewhere warm. Um, so, we'll, we'll see. You never know. David Caston asks, any plans for more mods on your camper? Oh, the squirrel's yelling at me again. I don't know. I'm in limbo right now. And uh, nobody asked me, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I don't know what I'm going to do with my trailer. When it broke in half, um, that was a big shock. And as you could understand, that could have worked out a lot worse. That could have been an incredibly, incredibly serious mishap. I was so lucky. But now it bothers me. Um, I had it welded, you know, when I was in uh, Michigan, 
Was I in Michigan or was I in Illinois? I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry, I'm terrible with that. Wherever I was, when I was near Marquette, I had it welded up. But since then, I I have been talking to, to a few people, you know, some professionals. And uh, I don't know if, if it's going to do it again. I have no guarantees. I have been talking to the manufacturer, but we have not reached an understanding at this point. Let me put it that way. And so it's left me in limbo. I know I'm going to get out camping again, but will I have things resolved in a couple of months? I don't know. And so that's why when I originally opened this up and uh, I wanted to get people's ideas as to, um, do I need to get a new trailer? Do I need to not get a new trailer? Do I need to try something else? I don't know. Do I need to get a motorcycle, which I hear in the background here? Um, probably I'm not going to go the motorcycle route. Uh, but I don't know. Or maybe I'm just going to get a backpack. As long as I have a camera, that's all that matters, right? Who knows? Anyway, um, I'm so sorry. I, I'll tell you what. This was a trial. I've got some bugs to work out with this this uh, this MacBook, and uh, I will work them out. Thanks for your time. I'm not going to waste any more time because I just can't see your comments. I got a problem here, so I'm going to end it now. Thank you. I really appreciate everybody, and um, I there will be a new video. By the way, the one thing I didn't say, I didn't have a video ready because I'm still working on the kitchen. It's taking a lot longer. And, uh, and I am filming it, but I'm only halfway there. And I can't do a video of just being halfway. I want, to be it, I want it to be finished. I want everybody to see the before and the after. So there will be a video coming out um, probably the end of the week. I'll, I'll speed it up just so that you got something because I don't even know if I'll make this public. I, I sort of really messed this up. I'm sorry about it, but it was nice speaking to some of you at least. I hope you got something out of it. But till then, you know, happy camping. Enjoy summer. Take care. Bye.